Today's video is all about insect ID. The goal is to show common insect orders that are easily seen from day to day in Texas. First we have Blatodia, or more commonly known as cockroaches. Cockroaches are typically seen as a pest in like warm and wet environments. Cockroaches are always going to be flattened and will always have their head hidden by their pronotum. The pronotum is akin to the thorax. Commonly we'll find cockroaches in places like cabinets under sinks or by our tubs, showers, or by pools and sewers. Next is coleoptera or beetles. Beetles elytra or their outer wings are hardened and solid like a shield that help protect their insides and abdomen. The elytra cover the inner wings and meet in a straight midline. Coleoptera serve many, many different ecological roles, and these roles will even vary from immature to adult form. Dermaptera, or earwigs, are small and long with large scissor-like structures called cerci at the end of their abdomen. It's important to not confuse earwigs with rove beetles, as rove beetles are a beetle and lack these cerci, while earwigs have the large cerci. The order of flies, midges, and mosquitoes. The second pair of wings will always be reduced to haltiers, and because of this, it will often look like they only have one set of wings. However, when you look closely, the haltiers look like little underdeveloped sticks coming right up behind the sec on the second pair of wings. Dipterans can also serve many ecological roles. Clearly, mosquitoes are a large pest. However, other flies can also be very good pollinators. Ephemeroptera, often, like, often called mayflies, are aquatic species. They're extremely good indicators of good water quality. Uh, they typically have large triangular forewings with smaller hind wings, and at the end of their abdomen, there are two or th three long string-like appendages that may look like tails. Up next is Hemiptera, which is typically broken into three suborders that are all considered to be true bugs. First, we have Alkenorhynchia. Uh, examples of Alkenorhynchia are going to be cicadas and leafhoppers. Next, we have Heteroptera, uh, also known as our true bugs of the true bugs. Examples of these are stink bugs. And finally, we have Sternorhynchia. Examples of Sternorhynchia are aphids, scale bugs, and several other different kinds. Different characteristics of Hemiptera suborders are going to be the very leathery like Hemelytra, or they're going to have clear front, front wings like cicadas or lace bugs in the family Trigidae. Up next is Hymenoptera ants, bees, and wasps. They'll always have two sets of wings with few veins, although they'll still be considered to be membranous wings. The front wings are going to be larger than hind wings, and they may serve many ecological roles, but they're typically good pollinators. Many of the females in this order will have some adaptation to sting. I Up next is Isoptera, or termites. It's very important to not confuse termites with ants, although to the untrained eye, they can be appear to be very, very similar. Isoptera are always going to have beaded antenna, and they will not be elbowed, so they will not appear to be in an L or squared type shape, and each individual segment will appear to be a very small ball. The thorax and abdomen are also going to be very broadly joined, whereas in Hymenoptera, they have a very tight, what's referred to as a wasp waist. Isoptera are pests, and they typically eat lots of woods and can cause different damages to different housing foundations. Finally, we have Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths. The, identifi the identifying feature of Lepidoptera is quite literally their name, which means scaled wing. Each of their wings, which may be very many different colors or different, uh, different dull colors for moths, 
very many patterns are all going to be scaled so when you touch their wings it'll appear as if like some powder has come off on your finger but that's just the scales being pulled off of their wings lepidoptera uh, are very good pollinators when people think of pollinators it's typically lepidopterans so butterflies and moths that are first thought of although bees come into a close second to that thought um, they serve different, many different ecological roles though, although it depends on their, their life cycle. Typically, immatures or your larvae will be considered to be agriculture pests, while your adults will be very good pollinators.